You cannot disciple a demon. You also can't discipline it out. Go get in the corner. Leave me alone. You can stay in the house, but behave. Don't irritate me. Don't talk to me. You cannot reason with a spirit. You also can't crucify it. Jesus said you can crucify the flesh. You can take authority over the flesh and command it to come under control. But a squatter, a demonic spirit that puts you in bondage, you have to cast it out. It doesn't even, you don't know, a lot of people don't even know how it got there. So go, I don't know. I just have had this for like years. Sometimes you can find the entrance and close the window. But in prayer, you can always close the window even if you don't know where it came from. That's right. And you can be set free. I know these things. I'm starting to learn them even more so because of the amount of people that God has brought into our lives that I have to pray for. When demonic spirits or evil spirits are cast out, they want, uh, they'll come back unless you have replaced that vacancy. You must fill it with the Word of God, worship. You must fill your life. I can't say this enough. Your thought life, your dream life, your, your everyday life must have the Word of God the name of Jesus. Worship in it. And your focus needs to be pure. Tear down the strongholds. Don't let them exist. And what happens is your life begins to change. You get your ground back that you've given away. Demonic spirits are legalistic. They must have a legal right to harass you. That's what they say. Sometimes before a demonic spirit can be cast out or be forced to stop harassing you, they um, and their legal rights need to be removed. You may have to ask forgiveness for something. Okay, God, I need to repent. You might have to renounce something. Lord, I was involved in witchcraft here. Lord, I, mean, I was playing with Ouija boards. Uh, Father, I had tarot cards and I knew what I was doing even if I didn't know what I was doing. It gave entrance. I renounce this in my life in Jesus' name. And sometimes through confession and repentance and renouncing something, you've already kicked their feet out from underneath them. So when you pray and you pray over people, They'll go like, wow, that wasn't like Hollywood at all. <laughs> Nobody thrashed, screamed, or foamed it in the mouth. <laughs> I say, I know, but you just got set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to close the window. And we take them through prayers. And they shut the windows. But their life changes. Yeah. But if they really don't want to be set free, and they're only doing it just to please the pastor, mm. it won't work. That's right. I've had people get saved before. And uh, they went through a prayer with me, and it looked like they were sincere, mm -hmm. but they weren't. Mm -hmm. The following day, they said, you know, I prayed with you, and it was the beginning. But it wasn't until the next day when I gave my life to Jesus, my whole life. Because you told me I had to bring it all to Jesus. No more of this will Jesus save me. Wash me clean. I give you my life. Amen. You said I had to bring everything. Mm -hmm. Jesus wanted my affairs, my fornication. He wanted my drugs, my alcohol. And he wanted my pornography. He wanted all of it. And he wanted me to bring it all to the cross. What if I didn't want to bring it all to the cross, Pastor Daniil? Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead. Keep some of your bondages then, but don't tell me you're going to get delivered. Because you don't even want to give it up. You really want to get rid of it? It'll leave. You don't really want to get rid of it? It won't. That's right. That's right.